I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Debbie Harbison, and you're in the talk Five Principles of Unschooling. Um, my husband and I have two kids, Melissa and Keith. They are now uh, 28 and 26. They're grown, and they're both married and on their own. Um, we took them, we had them in school for a short time at the very beginning of first and second grade. So just a just a real quick thing about how um, why I'm up here, how I even got here. I don't know if anybody anybody here was involved with it or saw it, but there was something done some time ago called the Agora IO. It was an unconference. George Donnelly did it. He got some people together and said, you have something you want to talk about? Come here, do it. And it was all in like one week weekend. We all got on Justin TV and then we, we, everybody just did talks. And those talks were recorded. And uh, I gave one then. It was called um, Unschooling Educational Anarchy for the Whole Family. And Joyce or somebody saw that and the sky about it. And so they invited me to come. And I live in Indiana. Are there other rooms besides these up here? Uh, and uh, so yeah, here I am. Um, I'm just, and so I'm here as just a mom who saw lots of value in the idea of unschooling. I tried my best to implement those ideas in my own family. And so I'm here to share my thoughts and experiences of how it worked for us, how it worked for our family, and to encourage anyone else who's interested in it to um, try it in your family. I'm a big believer in it. Um, I'm a very big young component. I will talk to you all day about it if you want to. So <laughs> now that you know what I look like, if you want to grab me, ask me questions even after this is over, feel free, feel free to do that to do that. As I'm making the talk here today, I just printed up a few things that I have on my website. Everything I have here is available for free on the website. They're just different PDFs. Um, this, I actually made some, well, I'll talk about that in a minute, but there's only seven copies of these in the whole world, so. Look at that one. If anybody wants a hard copy of that, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, okay, so in thinking about this talk, and you know, them inviting me out here, I, I didn't really know a lot about Libertopia itself, so when I, you know, I went to the website, was reading around, I happened to catch on to the piece um, where they talked about Libertopia, and Libertopia has five principles. And I was reading through them, and I thought, oh, it's pretty cool. I could line unschooling up with every single principle that I saw there. So I thought, okay, I will just use that as a framework to talk about unschooling, you know, using the same principles that they have in Utopia. Because unschooling is the same way in that there's no really central plan to it. It's it's based on principles and then it's up to each individual or individual family to implement it in, in the way that, that works best for you. Okay? Um, it's different, in, like I said, in every individual family. And um, before I go through the actual, uh, you know, through my framework, just a few uh, upfront comments about unschooling itself so that you at least have some idea. I don't know, is, is there anybody in here who hasn't heard the term unschooling? Okay, so there are at least a couple. So unschooling is a term that was really in, uh, coined uh, from a man named John Holt. He was an education reformer. Um, he, uh, through the 60s, he passed away, I think it was in 1986, but he really got uh, a lot of people to get the kids out of school. This isn't, isn't educating. Because school is not education. And he encouraged a lot of families. He tried, for a long time, he worked in, he thought he could reform the system. Hopefully, maybe not so quickly after he's on this book, figured out that that wasn't going to work. And his real view of the term unschooling at first was just simply anybody who wasn't in school was unschooling. Since then, though, it has grown because there are a lot of people homeschooling, but not everyone is um, unschooling as, as a term known today. 
Um, it's basically just understanding that um, kids are already born knowing how to learn. They're very good at it. Um, we've got uh, born with natural curiosities and interests. I mean, there's a reason. I think I said this thing a piece earlier this morning, but you know, if you watch little little children, um, and, and we do it without any anxieties, you know, six, seven months old, you know, they start to um, grab things, they start to learn to crawl, and if you take something that looks interesting to them, and you put it on the other side of the room, and they, they do know how to crawl, or in some way, emulate themselves to crawl, they're crawling on the floor, sliding on the butt, it's just one thing that my daughter did, they're going to get over there, and they're going to get crowded because they're interested in doing that. So they will figure out, and they will learn, and it could be different in a lot of different kids on how they're going to get over there. That's the essence of it, and that doesn't have to end at any point in there and all of our lives. When we're interested in something, it's much easier to learn about it, it's much easier, you enjoy it, and it's you have a real reason for doing it. And that's the idea, basic idea of what unschooling is about. It doesn't mean no education, but it doesn't mean the absence of learning. It's just child-led interest-led learning. Um, and the basic point is John Holt. I read almost probably all of his books. I would recommend any book that he writes, uh, that he's written. Um, they're very good. He has a wonderful way of writing and helping you to understand what education really is, really, really should be. And again, it has nothing to do with school. Um, so the, the hard part for all of us who have been, you know, cool raising schools is to um, relax, uh, to learn to relax and trust kids and know uh, that they're capable and they know how to learn and if they follow their interests they will learn the things that they need to learn. Okay, so now let's take that and apply it to each of the principles that go with Libertopia. I'm going to read the principle and then I'm going to talk about that in terms of unschool. So the first Libertopia principle is just all actions should be peaceful and voluntary. And it says, the axiomatic and first principle of Libertopia is that all forms of coercion and violence are unacceptable. Okay, so uns just apply that to the realm of education. All education should be peaceful and voluntary. And what that means is a parent or a teacher or anyone else doesn't really need to be standing in front of a child saying, well, you have to learn this and you have to learn it right now, you know, before next week. And when basically you have to learn it just because I said so, because it meets my schedule or my, or my goals. You know, it's, it's all about the teacher and not about the learner. Um, so again, if we want education to be peaceful and voluntary. And the other aspect of that that's really want everyone to think about is that any time that you do force someone to learn something, it's probably happened to everybody in this room. It can be done. <laughs> Somebody can tell you, you know, you, you have to do this or, you know, you have to learn these dates for these uh, events in history to get the grade in this class that you need so that you can jump, jump to the next place. A couple of things could happen. One is, after you learn those, you know, what may happen a year later, do you, did it mean anything to you? Do you remember it? Do you know it? Probably not. The other aspect of that is as we constantly do that to kids, they start losing that natural sense of curiosity, and um, which is really um, that natural curiosity is the most valuable tool that we all have going for, for us in order to have some self-directed education. So unschooling is the absence of a course of authority demand, demanding control over another individual's learning. Another way to look at it, if you you know, if you are thinking of homeschooling in different ways that you might do it, is in my uh, in my per in my family, you know, once I started to apply it, understand it, and really use it, certainly makes for a more peaceful family life because, you know, I didn't have to worry about um, what they need, you know, those books are what your first grader needs to know and your third grade, you know, none of that matters. What matters is your individual child and what he's interested in, he or she is interested in. So you're working with your child, you're not 
taking them by the hand and pulling them over here, you're seeing, oh, they're going down this path. What things do I know about this path or what can I find to help along this path? And you just become the facilitator, facilitator to help them do that. So again, it, unschooling doesn't mean that you as a parent don't, don't do anything. You're a facilitator, you, you look for things, you do things with them, if there's something there. And I, I can't tell you how much I learned along with my kids. A lot of people are concerned that, in just a general homeschooling view, that they can't do it because they're, they feel like there's a lot of things that they don't know. Well, I was the same way. There was a lot of things that maybe I didn't know or that I was supposed, you know, I learned them in school, I had these classes, but you hear a lot of people say that, that they can't teach a certain subject, and I said, well, Oh, so you didn't have that in school? No, I had it in school. Well, what grade did you get? Oh, I got a good grade. You know, so what, what are they saying? I mean, how, how effective was that? Because in my view, you don't really learn something unless you can, you know, explain it to someone else and show someone else. Okay, let's see. Um, so again, give access, share resources, and, and when you do that, it's all a matter of offering let your child, you know, they may want to do something, you may, what you think, have what you think is an awesome idea, for whatever reason, maybe they don't want to do it, then just let it go, and just, you know, just keep on, just keep on rolling. Uh, let's see, here is where I wanted to just point up one of the things that I have, again, all these things are on my website for free, I didn't say where that was, though, it's, it's just debbieharbison.com, Every, everything is there. But just to show you, a lot of people are worried about specific subjects and how that's going to work. My personal strength, I guess we would say, would be in the area of writing. So I made up a little ebook called The Right Way to Have Fun. And in it, you will see just lots of different things that I did with my kids um, with the actual written work that they did, spelling, grammar, whatever. It was just, just the way it is. I just put it in there just to show you of some ways that things that you can do and again if, if they didn't want to do it you know who cares just throw that idea out there and have fun with uh, with them and that's just an example in the one area that I felt like I really had some something to offer so that's something you can take a look at and you can hopefully look at that and see as I introduce it and stuff see the attitude behind it the unschooling attitude about it so I printed some up in case anybody, when you leave here, if you want some of those, feel free to grab it. If it run out or for whatever reason you don't get one here and you do want one, just go and it's, you can just download it off the website. Okay, so that's principle number one. Let's see. Let me get a drink. Sorry. Here's what Libertopia says on their principle number two. Honor the self. Each one of us is unique and the universe endowed with free will, reason, and dignity. Celebrate and radically express your unique individuality. Okay, if we wanted to, we could keep that the same and just say honor the self. We could also change it to say maybe honor the learner, honor the individual learner. And again, as I'm talking through this, you can also, you know, some of you may come, may be coming here thinking of in view of a uh, parent, but you can also think of unschooling uh, for yourself and think of this as I'm talking through some of this think about maybe how how your childhood would have been different if you would have you know had the opportunity to be have been raised in that kind of freedom where you could kind of follow your own interests and do those sorts of things so I uh, just want to make point that out that think of this on on both scales I mean it wasn't unschooling wasn't only, only important for me to learn to help my kids, but it did a lot for me personally too. Um, so anyway, that one about uh, honor the self or honor the learner and about the uniqueness of individuals. This one is perfect because unschooling is all about expressing an individual's uniqueness to the world because um, if you let a child develop his own interests, every child is going to have a unique mix of interests. And as they do that, and they learn, and they grow, and they continue, you know, they find this interest, they mix it with another one, they're all, they're going to make, create this big web of who they are as an individual. What more perfect way to raise very unique, independent people 
than by letting each of them develop in, in that manner. Um, so when a parent respects, honors, and nurtures those interests, you're going to really have um, an interesting, unique individual. And um, I think that, you know, my kids are, you know, they're just very, uh, we just had a great time together. We, we, we had some very interesting discussions. I was saying that earlier today, too. It's one of my favorite things that um, we just sit down and just talk about things a lot. I mean, there was no set curriculum sometimes. We're just sitting there lounging around in the living room, and all of a sudden we're in a deep discussion on something because, you know, my daughter just finished reading Animal Farm or something. So um, those, were, those are some of my favorite memories. Um, now, about this time, I figured some people are starting to kind of wonder about some issues. Um, this can be hard for parents. It was hard for me. Um, there's a there's a period of like, unless anyone in here was raised as an unschooler, you've probably got a lot of baggage, or at least some baggage. Some of us have more suitcases than others, <laughs> on on school and learning and and what that's all about. That's why I highly recommend John Holt. Anything he's written, he really helps. Um, he helped me anyway think through think through a lot of these things and think about education in a, in a completely different way. Um, so let's see. So yeah, I was saying that it can be hard for parents and that we all have the baggage. So it's a matter for a lot of us to, um, I, I know there's some people out here in the audience because I've talked to you have, um, your kids are, maybe you don't even have kids yet or they're very, very young and I really, really envy you because you're going to have so much more figured out as you go than I did. Like I said, I took my kids out at the beginning of first and second grade and we never looked back. And even, even at that point, you know, we had a, we had a gradually move through it. I, I, uh, you know, I would move along pretty well and then I would, the anxieties would come back and then, you know, I would, I would, I would get back in there. And a lot of times there's a fellow over here, my husband, John, he was the one who sometimes got me back on track again because um, he did a lot, but of course I was with the kids doing the stuff and he was, you know, he was out working a lot of the time, but so he had more of a big picture view of it, I guess, and I was in the day-to-day -day of the, you know, the day where the ketchup went on the ceiling and, you know, all whatever happened that day. And I said, this, this just isn't going to work, you know. Let's just go buy this curriculum and just, they, they just make them do this, this and that every day. And, and he would just roll his eyes and say, you know, just keep, I'm telling you, I'm seeing people out there. These kids are, these kids are growing. They're doing great. Keep, keep at it. So he was, he was a great support to me. At the time I was doing this, you know, I'm talk, we're talking now, what, 20 years ago, computers and especially message boards were just, barely getting started and that was where I got a lot of my support through some message boards. There were homeschoolers in my area but for a long time there was, I could, I, I didn't know a single home unschooler in person. So I got a lot of my support that way. I also again read uh, books from John Holt and others and I saw that every time I was I was into that or if I had a book just laying on my shelf that I would pick up once in a while it just kept me there, kept me where I needed to be, and I was able to, you know, keep pushing forward. And then, of course, over time, as I saw the success and I saw things happening, I thought, Shh, he's right, <laughs> this works. I think we all have to kind of, you know, get in there and see that for ourselves. Something will happen, hey, you know, they're right, this works. And I'm just very confident that if any of you are wanting to try it, that you, that, 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 that same thing is going to happen. Um, and when we do have these anxieties and such, you know, it's from our experiences and it's also because we have very good intentions. I mean, we're the children's parents and we, we want them to do well, we want them to succeed. Um, that's another thing to think about is what is, you know, what does that mean? What is that definition? Some people don't really think that through. And they also don't think through that your definition of the word may not be the same as your child's definition of the word. <laughs> their path along life is not your path. And that's where it really helped me to see, you know, they're, you know, they are two separate unique individuals that I'm helping move out into the world. So 
let's take the path that they want to take. What are their natural interests? What are they doing? And, and follow along that way. Um, and just, you know, don't try to put them in a little box and force anything. And it's, it's just similar back to the Libertopia or the, you know, the way all of us are, um, you know, where we kind of co cohesive together with politically is that, you know, what's work, worked better with people, you ever, you know, try and knock somebody over the head and say, oh, come on, I can't believe that you're not a voluntarist or something. No, you, you, you give people information and, you know, they're going down their own path. And if you have some information or something that can help them, then you're going to do that. Well, treat your child just like you would treat another adult and do, you know, think about it that same way. Here's another big uh, thing that helped me is it's all about learning. It has nothing to do with teaching. Um, I recommend that don't even think in terms of teacher because really, and people would say that, oh, how do you like having your mom as your teacher or how do you, what is it like being, being your kid's teacher? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm their parent and I'm just, I'm just helping them learn. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, again, we're just trained to think that way that there has to be someone out there, someone that's really specifically centrally planning and, and teaching this child. Actually, matter of fact, my daughter just told me this the other day. One of the things that really annoys her is that, you know, they see how she is and then blah, blah, and they find out she's homeschooled. And she said the first things out of their mouths these days because she's, like I said, she's 28, is, oh, but she tells them about it. Well, who taught you? She hates that question because she said, huh, you know, I, I try to explain to them and tell them that, you know, I've, um, there were people in my life, mentors or whatever, that helped me a lot, but it's self-directed education. I found my own way with a lot of things. I chose this mentor to help me, and, and, and they did teach me this or that, but, it, but they, they think, uh, you know, oh, well, your parents must be big college professors or something, and they taught you about this. No, we're not. <laughs> I mean, we both have a college education, but that, you know, in business. Um, uh, let's see, uh, about learning and teaching. Let me give you a little example of that, or um, at least um, in terms of helping your child find, like it doesn't, it's not always about you, the parent, and it's not about you, you know, people want to say, oh, you're just, you know, holding up, hiding in your house. Well, it's, it's the opposite for, for us anyway. I wanted to get my kids out of that classroom so that I could get them out in the world, which is where they were before they reach that magical line that, you know, none of us can see where it's, oh, compulsory school attendance age now. They need to be in school. They need to start doing school things. Whereas before, before that, one day before that line, you could be, you know, going out to the zoo just for the heck of it and having fun. But one day after that magic line, people think you have to go to the zoo and you have to have this worksheet that you take with you to write down all of the things that you learned. You don't. I mean, it's, it's not any different. It's, it's just like it is before the kids, think about times when you just didn't worry about that. You knew that a healthy child in a healthy environment is going to grow and they're going to learn how to walk and they're going to learn how to talk and they're going to, you know, and it's, it's the same. People are trying to tell you it's, it's not the case with like, um, what, you know, reading, writing or whatever, but I'm here to tell you that that's, that's just a myth. I mean, as long as you keep going and you follow interest in your, you know, literate environment and just just being, you know, giving your kids just, you know, playing games with them or whatever, that it's, it's, going, it's going to happen. My daughter was real interested in um, gardening after a while. And we, one thing that happened with us, we happened to have a friend who was very, very into gardening. And they worked out their own uh, deal and they did different things. We moved to a different house and we had this landscape that we didn't want. And we said, Melissa, why don't you just design something for us and let's make a new front landscape. And so that was a project that she worked on. Um, she found this other group. We, I think I just saw this in the paper. Um, it was called Master Gardeners. Um, I don't know, it might be different in different states, but there's something in our, oh, did I say I'm from Indiana? I live in Indiana. Um, and there's this Master Gardener group and she thought, oh, that'd be interesting. Let's go check that out. And she went to this, to their meetings and stuff. And she was 13 at the time. The next youngest person was 30 something and she loved it and they loved it. I mean, I, it's not about age and zip code and grades. It's about common interests. 
and you, you know it you can have those same a common interest with someone your own age but my point is you know she had friends of all different ages because they had that common interest of of gardening um, our son Keith was very interested in rocks and uh, happened to find we I live in southern Indiana we live across the river from Louisville and in Louisville there is a group called the I think it was a Kentuckiana Geological Society, um, which another name for that, in my view, is just rock, rock hounds, rock collector. I mean, they just they just love rocks. They love jewel, you know, gems and all that. And so we took Keith to that, and again, he found some people just just had a great time with them because they shared that. There was one guy who really took a particular. He, he just thought it was so cool what we were doing, and he helped us. He did some things for our whole family and took us to a quarry. You can't always get into some quarries. This guy, I'm not sure what all he, I think he maybe even did some research, some science projects, but he invited us with him for a day. And we went to this quarry and, you know, well, he <laughs> he made it easy for us. He knew all the right spots and, you know, he took it too. And he had us bring, you know, these hammers and stuff. And so he just showed us how to do it. And he showed us a crystal that was in a rock and showed us where to break it and why to break it there and it's just a very natural way of just pursuing that interest um, our kids learned a lot a lot in the process so just a couple uh, examples with that excuse me I'm gonna get another drink I guess I could keep that up all right let's go to principle number three on Libertopia it says rule yourself as a free and sovereign in as free and sovereign individuals, we rule ourselves and are totally responsible for all of our actions. Okay, this one, while well, I'm saying that about everyone, and this one's good too, <laughs> because we can uh, keep this one as it is, rule yourself, but as I said before, let's include the children. I mean, our kids our kids are people too, and let's, let's treat them that way. Um, or we could also say, instead of rule yourself, we could say educate yourself. I don't really want to... If I say educate yourself, that's not so much of, of what I mean in as much as self-directed education. So, like I said a minute ago, you know, you can go out and find and people who know more than you do about something and choose your mentors and negotiate different deals and such. Uh, the lady I was talking about a while ago that helped Melissa with uh, do some of learn some of the stuff about landscaping and stuff, they did barter and she did that, and then Melissa went over to her house and helped her with some of the different gardening. Um, chores and things that she was doing so they negotiated and, and worked that out together well, she also she also traded some babysitting too because her kids were um, a bit younger um, so let's see oh and then after doing that she she got she ended up homeschooling her kids too she she had a lot of fun with it too um, let's see so for educate yourself or rule yourself it's the individual learner who gets to decide um, that individual is in control. They know what their interests are. They should be in control of that, their desires. And on the other side of that, there's the responsibility aspect too. Because here again, I'm trying to predict, as if I was listening to this talk you know, some time ago, what people may be thinking at certain points. So um, I'm guessing here that some will say, well, you know, well, you know, what about what's going to happen later? What if there's gaps? Those sorts of things. Um, so let's talk about that a minute. Um, first thing I want to say is that when we talk about self-directed education, when you think about it, we're in charge of our own personal education for far more years than, than we're not. But what we do is we stick kids into the environment of schools at at the time, at the exact worst time. I mean, like I said, they're they're young, they're rolling along at four, three, four, five, whatever, and then all of a sudden they have to go to school and somebody's saying, well, no, Johnny, you, you can't go outside right now and look at that bug because you have to fill out this worksheet and tell me what color this is and use the right crayon and, and such and such. And, and, and it becomes all about what that other person expects me to do what am I supposed to do for them and then producing for them to prove that I'm learning something you know right at the time when they should be really developing their self-awareness of the things I'm talking about like their interests and such 
so that when they do go out and choose to go out and do more structured learning and more, more structured things, um, they become very confident of their ability to learn. They know that if there's something that they need to learn and they haven't learned it for some reason, and they need, you know, they need to learn it because of some, some goal that they have, or it's part of a hoop that they need to jump through in order to reach the goal that they have, they know that they can do it. And then, and then like I said, once the rest of us, I'm, I'm going to say speak for myself and not for other people, you know, you go through school and then you get out and you're like, huh, now what? You know, there's really nobody telling me what to do anymore, what, you know, and then and you kind of, and the other thing you're nurturing through all that time is you're keeping that innate sense of curiosity that children are born with. Uh, a lot of people here, I think, you, I don't even, I don't think you would be here if you didn't somehow make it through that in a more intact way than a lot of other people, because I just don't think you would, you get to an event like Libertopia without really doing a lot of critical thinking and thinking for yourself. And if you were in school, then my judgment on that is you made it through and you are the way you are, not because of the system, but despite of it. That you you went through it and you held on to that stuff and you, you worked your way through it. Let's raise some kids who don't have to put up those barriers and, and you know, and make that fight, but just um, have that and never lose that and just flow right into the world that way. Um, let's see. And I said before, okay, so yeah, like I said, I'm kind of predicting what people may be thinking and stuff. So um, I feel like right here it's time to say that unschooling does not necessarily equal unstructured. The whole point is that the individual learner decides if and when some structured learning is going to happen. Um, a lot of unschoolers will choose structure because it's simply a, mean, a means to an end. They're trying to reach a certain goal and there's certain hoops that they have to jump through in order to get there. And if they make that decision and they do that, the doing whatever it is they're doing, it has a re they have a reason for doing it. So it's not a problem and it's not the parent or someone else telling them that you have to do that. They see a real reason for doing. Now there are a lot of unschoolers there could be two individual unschoolers looking at a certain goal and there's this hoop there that society tells them they need to jump through. One of them might look at that and say, okay, I'll do it. I will jump through that hoop. Another one might look at it and say, well, screw that. I'm going around that hoop. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know exactly how it might work, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I refuse to do that. Both, in my view, both of those choices are valid. Just, just let the individual make that choice. And then in the long run, it would be nice to get a, a society, depending on what that hoop is, a, to a society that says, you know what, you, you don't need to jump through that hoop. Like you don't need to get this license because you're going to rub somebody's back, you know, massage, massage somebody or whatever the case may be. Um, sorry, I keep losing my spot because I put my head up. Uh, so again, uh, with unschooling, it's, it's up to the learner, even the structure is, because you rule yourself. Um, I wanted to, again, this is something you can get to from my website. I wanted to use this, again, I'm trying to also help you think of this as adults and not just think of it for your kids, but there was something that I wanted to do, I think it's been a little over a year now. I get really interested in voluntarism for uh, some time now, and I used to uh, subscribe to Carl Watner's publication. And then I, then I stopped for a while, and then I was just looking at it again online, and I saw they had all the issues online, every, every one of them, on PDF. I thought, wow, what if I read all of those from the beginning? How cool would that be? What could I learn from that? What, what things were in there, or what sort of a historical development would I see, having not lived through it myself, could I do that if I read all of those issues? And so I just started brainstorming or thinking about how I, how I could do that, how I could make that fun for myself, how I could maybe set it up so that I had something to help me um, stay with the project and stuff. So I created a blog for that. I contacted Carl. I told him what I wanted to do. He was very enthused about the idea, which was really cool. And, 
And so I created a blog called Debbie and Carl, and so I've been reading the issues, and as I do, if there's something that hits me, and I'm, actually when I started out, I read the first issue, and I commented on everything, everything in it, and I did that for a few issues, and I'm like, holy moly, I'll be dead before I finish it if I, if I do it this way, because <laughs> Carl has a, a lot of stuff out there. So now I'm just reading the issues, and if something, maybe pulling something out of, out of each issue, and I'm still just on 20 something and I guess I think it's been a it's been a year since I started my point with that though is that I just set something up for myself I mean and I think that all came to me because of all of my previous thinking and learning and stuff about unschooling about how how might I do this for myself for me and again see how it how it integrated writing because every I, I like to write and writing is my thing so I figured out a way to do that in order to, and I know that when I write about something, I said something a minute ago about if you think you know, you've learned something to show somebody or teach or whatever, you know, I'll sit there sometimes and I think there's something I'm really going to say about one of those articles, and I start writing about it and I quickly learn, I need to think about this some more. And so it's really been cool and helpful for me. So think about your strengths and things that you enjoy, and there's some things that maybe the way that you can create some self-directed education for yourself. Um, so let's see, we talked about the hoops, uh, and I had a little note here, just a, another thing about when, when they're growing, you know, and you're, again, you may be thinking about some practicalities about some things, you know, what about math, what about this or that, there's just so much that you can do that people don't, they discount it, or, you know, we're trained to discount it, but there's a lot that we did just playing with a deck of cards, it was a lot of fun just, and any game, I mean, lots of games use no, I mean, you played Yahtzee and the strategy and all the, you know, putting the numbers together, whatever. But if this is a simple game of cards and war, where what's the regular war? I don't remember now because we don't play it that way. But you, know, you put the two cards down and whoever has the highest card gets the stack or something, right? Well, we just I played games with my kids where, you know, we flipped the card over and whatever it was we decided to do, like maybe it was addition. So it was, you know, five and three and whoever said eight first they won that war and then and then they got the card so and you just figure out ways to do it to work with your kids and you say like you know obviously like okay mom I know you're gonna win because I'm trying to learn this this isn't fair or you know whatever so you just you just have fun with that I said okay well I'll close my eyes and we'll, we'll put them out there and I'll give you a couple of seconds or something then I'll open my eyes and we'll see what happens so there's just all sorts of things like that that you can do and again you just offer those things to your kids and you play and you have fun and and all of the life does not separate um, things into subjects school does and school does it because we pull the kids out of their natural environment where they're following their interests and once we do that we're like we've, we've already screwed them up and we're gonna like now take and try to put the things back in and to make sure that we don't miss anything we pull things into subjects and and try and give it to them that way but a very holistic unschooling way of life and doing lots of interesting things you will not believe all, all of the things that would come into an interest and I'm, I'm just gonna let you think about that as far just think for example of my son and his interest in rocks and fossils and how quickly a lot of different subjects will come in come into that um, another point I wanted to make here on this self-directed uh, learning part, you know, principle number three, uh, um, this is another thing that school kind of does to us, is that learning happens um, all the time. Every day you learn something, and learning can happen 24 hours a day. And in our family, um, there's four of us. <coughs> Three people in the family are night, they had most of their energy in the evenings. One person had their energy in the morning. Me. So I was outnumbered. <laughs> All the rest of them, like, get their energy at night. You know, my son would come to me at 10.30, you know, in the evening when I was just really wore out and try and start one of those deep, deep discussions that I was telling you about earlier. And, you know, sometimes I try to do it. We try to, like, oh, I'm so tired. And, you know, and we kind of worked our way through that. But one thing we did do with our son, because he was really, I mean, he just got his energy at night. I mean, 10, 30, 11 at night, he was just raring to go. So 
we let him. <laughs> I mean, John had to go to work the next morning, and you know he had to get up, so we had to keep you know some kind of structure there or do something to respect every member in the of the family. So we just let it, you know he had all kinds of stuff in his room, and he just went in his room at a certain time and did whatever you know he did in there. And I just have to laugh because you know we get up sometimes and maybe have to go to the bathroom or whatever and pass his room and here you know her paper crunching up or hammering one night you know I don't even I don't I don't care and I don't know exactly after you know I, I trusted and I knew he was doing a lot of things in there he would you might come out the next morning and he said check this out mom I whenever I get older I'm going to design my own house and this is exactly what it's going to look like, you know. And he had this whole plan. And at the time, he was interested in rock climbing, and so he had he had this two-story house or something, and one whole side of it was a rock climbing wall. And he was he was going to have that on his house. And so he just had those kind of things. He just he was just able to go in there, and you know, we didn't say, okay, well, you're going to have to go to bed because you're going to have to get up at nine o'clock in the morning so that we can sit in our little, you know, desks that we made because we're homeschoolers and and do our lessons. We just we just didn't live our life that way and you don't have to live your life that way. It it works otherwise. And some people hear that story and they say, "Well, but that's not how real life is." I mean, you're telling us right here that your husband had to get up because he, he went to his job. And that's true, but my husband had reasons to do that. There was no reason for at that time for my son to change anything about what he did. Now, later, when he was 12 years old, um, there's another book who relies a lot, she relies a lot on John Holt. Um, it's called The Teenage Liberation Handbook. Um, Grace Llewellyn, I highly recommend that book as well. I was reading that book, and as I do often when I'm trying to help you know, my husband or give information to my husband about things that I've learned, I usually would do it or would trap him in the car when we're on a trip and say, hey, listen to this. You know, I'm to read him excerpts from these books. And I did that with a Teenage Liberation Handbook. And it got him to thinking, and he had his own business at the time in computers. And he thought, you know, I'm not really thinking about this right. I, I need to see if Keith wants to come in with me. And I'm, I'm going to just see if, if uh, he wants to work for me. I'm going to hire him. And so he went to Keith with a plan, and he said, I'm, um, if you want to work for me, you can work for me from... 8 a.m. 8 to 12 I'll pay you two dollars an hour and you'll you know you're gonna do different you know he learned put the computers together they taught classes he set up the classrooms set you know put those computers together set the classrooms up which really was just cracked some people up sometimes because they're there's you know people coming in for their big uh, Microsoft whatever classes they were and and there's this 12 year old you know finishing up putting the putting the computers together. But so Keith is going to have to change his schedule and get up at 8 to do that. And I mean, he was all on that. He wanted to do that. Then was it a problem? No, I, I can't even, I mean, it wasn't even an issue. It was just, okay, there's one of those things that he wanted, you know, they negotiated the deal and it worked and, and he wanted to do that. So that process of don't worry about letting your kids have the freedom when they're kids, you know, let them have that. And when they're ready and when they want to make the choices to have more structure or to do other things, they're going to do it because they want to. There's real reasons to do it. 3.4. Oh, crud. Okay. Um, principle four, live and, live and let live. Let's make this one learn and let learn. Um, and I already said this before, unschooling is about you. To also think about that way. Um, a couple of other things I had here that I wanted to relate to was about um, if you're going to have anxieties, even if you, you're really into this, you know it, you, if you live in this society, things will probably happen and you're going to have some anxieties. So when try your best, and I don't think I was always successful, but try your best not to reflect those anxieties on your kids and, and, and give them that freedom and, and, you know, give them that nurturing. and find your own interest <laughs> to get yourself out of there. Um, it could even be like, you know, I think it kind of was for me when I said that about the books that you learn your own, learn about unschooling. I mean, that's one thing to learn about. Um, again, into writing, I spend a lot of time when they were in high school, especially when they were really self-directing themselves. I get interested in humor writing and I 
got with a group of people online and just had a great time with that. And it ended in me writing this book, which ended up being about um, our early early year experiences with homeschooling. And it's a humor book about it. There wasn't anything really like that out there at the time. So I wrote this and I just put it online for free. Again, it, it's out there now. You can get to it from my from my website. But I did something some time ago and I wasn't really happy with it. But I ordered like 10 copies of these just to see what it would be like in book form. Um, so I brought, I left, I saved three, I bought seven here. Um, I'm just going to give them away if anyone who picks one up wants to give me a donation that's fine but don't feel any obligation I just I just want to I want to do whatever I can to help other people do this because it was so it was one of the best decisions that our family family made this one I wanted to mention people are like what about gaps I mean are your kids going to learn everything they need to know what about spelling what about this what about that this may be the most important document I call it the ultimate homeschool encouragement it is a real document, a scan document that we got when I very first, when we very first started to homeschool. The state tried to have us do things that was not, the requirements that they had for us were not in state law, and we refused to do it along with some other people. I don't want to stand up here and act like I'm very courageous. I was, I was behind the other group of people that were saying they would do it too. <laughs> but uh, they sent, they sent us this threat, you know, this letter saying you have to do this, and blah blah blah. And if you, it's on my website, you can get it there. But I've made some copies here, and um, take a look at it. I, I, it has three spelling errors in it. There's more errors than that in it. People have told me. I circled it in red, and I told John, I said, "Let's just send this back. Let's just circle this in red and send it back." And he, he wouldn't let me do that. But <laughs> I really, I really wanted to do that. So I'm doing the next. I'm just putting it out there for the whole world to see. <laughs> Her name, you know, their name and everything is on it, and I don't care. <laughs> okay, very last one. Yeah, I want to say a couple of things, too. Debbie said that I gave her encouragement, and um, whenever I would come home and she didn't think she was getting it done the way it should be done, and she'd be all depressed and stuff, and I'd, I'd tell her, you didn't remember that time when you trapped me in the car and read John Holt to me? <laughs> well, from my perspective, everything you say that was going to happen has been happening, so I don't know what you're talking about, really, but it's not going right. That was, you get deep into it, into the day-to-day. -day. Another thing I did, because I'm a writer, you could do it in different ways. Maybe just take photos. I started doing a journal, and every month, I guarantee you, even after I knew this was happening, every month I'm like, oh, my God, this was a total disaster. Nothing happened this month. A few months go by, and I would always go back, and I would read it, and I'm like, wow, we did a lot that month. It, it, it's just really hard when you're in the day-to-day -to, -day to see that. And, and you don't want to, and I didn't get a chance to go into it, uh, the part about the proofs. There's lots of natural end goals and natural proofs for your kids. Some of the more obvious with a, a child who's interested in gardening, how, how do you know they're learning or whatever. Well, when she comes in the house with some really awesome tomatoes that we're going to put on our salad, I'd say she's probably learning something. Okay? There's lots of that built into the things that they do and their interests. Um, let's see. I don't know if there's anything else I want to well let me end with this because this is how it's going to end <laughs> um, the one place right now right now that you can actually implement the ideas of Libertopia is doing in, in your inside your own family because unschooling is Libertopia in action the end <laughs> Uh, feel free to take any of these. I don't. So what time? It, I didn't even look you at this, did I? Some questions, I guess. Yeah, well, you, you can. People will come in for the next session, but yeah, if you have any questions, we can. yeah. Book. Yeah, you were first, I guess. Or. Um, what do your kids do now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> our son Keith just got a job. He moved to Houston, and he's got a job now at a place called uh, Cameron. Cameron. They do, the they do valves. He's gonna do. Um, they've heard of the Six Sigma thing. Oh yeah. He's he's got a job doing that at, be at a Cameron. Six Sigma black belt. Our daughter. Um, this is this is really funny. I mean, she will. You, you all would have so much fun talking to her too. She's a development officer for um, an extension campus of IU. She went to college at IUS, and now she she. Uh, 
she's working there as a development officer, collect, you know, trying to get the movers and shakers to voluntarily give money to the university. <laughs> so, uh, well, yeah, the question the, everybody has is the same one that I had when Debbie started, and that is, can my kid achieve to get into the college that they want? Okay, so just to let you know, Melissa looked at several colleges. There's one in Indiana at Notre Dame called St. Mary's in Notre Dame that takes 400 women a year. 5,000 women apply. Melissa was accepted without a high school diploma. Okay, so you can get into very select colleges doing homeschooling without grades and without a diploma. She okay. wanted, they, they wanted to talk to her about some things. She, we went up there and they wanted to interview her. She had a 30 minute interview with this person and she's kind of, well, no, she wasn't nervous. That's the thing about her. She's like, you know, I'm going in there and telling them like it is. And, you know, she they walks in there and 30 minutes later they come out, you know, think of those images of movies or they're, you know, they're laughing, ah, you know, slapping on the back or whatever. And, and, and they, and they admitted her. She also uh, applied to Xavier and they called her and said, well, you know, you don't really have a lot of lab sciences, and there was a couple, there was one other thing that they didn't have, and she said, well, you know what, I gave you my portfolio, I told you everything about me, I know I can do anything at your university, and if you don't have enough information, if you haven't figured that out by now, then, then whatever. And then she got a letter a few days saying she was accepted. So <laughs> part of that is just, you know, and, and that's what I'm saying, that's why, how your kids will be. They will be confident, they, they know. And if she didn't get into that university, she didn't go there, but would she have really wanted to go to a place like that? You know you know what I'm saying? So it's he, kind of self- uh, He got accepted to Purdue, and they were both honors graduates. So without anybody directing them about what they learned, they learned enough to graduate from the schools that they wanted to go to and achieve the objective that they wanted to achieve. So, uh, it does work. And that's not to say that we think college is the ultimate goal either. Because my daughter, she was just saying this the other day. Because she's, you know, what people say to her. And she goes, I, I hate that people think that homeschooling worked because of what, where I am and what I'm doing now. She goes, if I decided that I was wanting, that I wanted to go live in the woods in a hut and I was happy doing that, it would still have succeeded. And then that annoys her because it's just a choice that she made. If you unschool some kids, they may take a totally different path and say, oh my God, I'm not, why would I, after all, all this, why would I go into the college environment? I can see a lot of, of your all's kids doing that and more power to them. It just doesn't matter. I mean, yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on parents who might, who may have intent, time intensive careers? And, like, in terms of like advice for them if they, they might be interested in applying either unschooling or, or um, aspects of it. That's a real good question that you know a lot of people have that I mean we were fortunate in, in how we arranged our schedules like that but I, I would hope that maybe a lot of families who feel like that have some some people around them um, as support that maybe will when they're younger take their kids during during the day and and just let them I mean it's not because I necessarily you know, that I was their parent with them the, during the whole day. You can find someone who was, you know, you know, the kids bring some books or whatever, come to the grandma's house or something, and then do things at night or on the weekends. Or do you have something to add to that? Because yeah, I just wanted to say that if you get in touch with other homeschoolers or unschoolers, um, I'm assuming your kids might need to babysit at the night on school or something like that along those lines. Even if they're not, they're old enough, they don't want to. You don't want to just trust them to go learn on their own without any adult supervision. You know, get in touch with the other unschoolers because there's older kids that are being homeschooled or unschooled, and they would be interested in hanging out with the younger yeah. kids and doing the same thing with them that their parents did for them. It's it's a integrated education system. Yeah, and just to say that it's not necessarily, I mean, it's not an obstacle. People, it's hard to answer that question because there's a lot of again individual ways that and resources and stuff that each individual family has that can help work through that. The point to it is how if someone wants it, to take anything else, if you want something bad enough, something you know, like that, you, for your kids, then you're probably going to make it happen somehow. And it may, you know, so what if it's not, you know, the way that I did it? That's not the point of what I'm trying to do here is just to get you to think about that and do, you know, 
implement it as, as far as you can. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably an obvious answer, but do your kids appreciate it? That what you went through for them? Well, that's the other aspect. Of one other thing I didn't get to say was that every year we ask them, do you want to keep doing this or not? You know, and there were some times where they, in the high school years, where they had a little hesitation because that's when they were starting to, you know, when the kids were little, they didn't really care so much or, you know, there wasn't that, oh, you're not in school or I'm, or there was, but it wasn't the same. And then they got in high school, and part of that was, I mean, Melissa asked me to buy, we bought five copies of a Teenage Liberation Handbook that she wanted to give to all of her close friends because she wanted to convince them to get the heck out of there so that they could, you know, when summer was over, that they could keep doing the stuff that they were doing. So, but they kept waiting, and they knew there were some advantages to it, but they said, you know what, I'm, I don't want to go through all the other crap. <laughs> so, so they just kept, they just kept on. Yeah. yeah. This is my first introduction to the idea of, of unschooling, but it sounds reminiscent to me of Maria Montessori's ideologies. Is that? It's very similar. I, I, I haven't, I, I almost looked into Montessori, and I would have had I not heard of homeschooling you and, and unschooling. You independently. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I hear some about Montessori, and this could be tricky because and I'm irritated about it, but there was a private Montessori school in our area, and they became a charter school now. So now they have to do the state testing and stuff, and I think that's damaging to it. I mean, it's affecting them. They're trying to pretend in the articles in the paper that it's not, but I think it is. But, you know, and I think Montessori is really, really close, but there were still a lot of things. I, I can't speak to it, but some pieces of it about they still wanted certain things to have happen in a certain linea, uh, linear way or whatever. But that's another, I mean, that would, I would be, I would consider as another choice for people who maybe couldn't do certain things or even when I was saying about working the solutions, uh, that if you do have a Montessori, there may be something to check out and see how. Now that you heard my perspective of unschooling, or if you read more from John Holt and other people, you may look at your local Montessori school and see how well it fits. It may it may be very it may be very close. Yes. Um, there was one thing my wife and I were certainly on board with the principle of homeschooling. We know that for our child's learning, it's the right thing. Uh, the thing that terrifies us is. Leveling our child with the burden of being so different. I mean, when we start, you know, when we start talking to them about the system that other people are in and why their parents put them into that system, and I mean, that's that's really. Did your kids experience any of that? Like, when they go to school, they or well, they meet kids that go to school and they say, "Your parents put you in prison all day." <laughs> well. You know, we didn't really um, <laughs> we didn't really talk to them about that. Like I said, for my kids or for my daughter, it was more like um, just trying to get them to uh, come out. <laughs> you know, they, come with them. They or the it's, oh yeah. Well, they, they like oh, time. you just get to um, you just <laughs> get to sleep all time. day, or <laughs> why don't you sleep all day? And my daughter said, because uh, that's boring. I mean, yeah, why would I do that? Yeah, feel free to take any. I apologize if we Thank went you, over Rick. time. Thank you very much. And I'll grab one of these. Anyway, seeing you're a bit of a humorist as well, the next time someone asks you a question, what are your children Thank doing you. now? The response would be both incorrect ones. They're both what? Incorrect ones. Okay. <laughs> anyway, good stuff.